I was put here, I believe, to create art. I love art, I love artists, I love doers, I love people that are engaged, that are putting themselves on the line, that are going to be judged whether they like it or not, yet they're not afraid of that and they're trying to accomplish something unique. I am giving something that's new, that's refreshing, that's going to make you think, something that people are going to say, oh my god, that's magnificent. This is the core of what I believe in as an artist. Not for attention back to me, it's not about that. It's about the evolved, finished piece of work. My concern when I create fine art is to be truly original. I spent 30 years creating all kinds of art through film, through photography, through sculpture. I do painting. There's multimedia pieces that I do. All Calavito film work is created on the original film negative without any special effects editing of any kind whatsoever. No programs through the computer, no digital effects imagery, nothing ever outside the natural boundaries of photography. There's nothing that comes into play in a Calavito composition other than the film seeing the light and the composition being recorded on the original film emulsion. People tend to make an artist validate himself and defend himself. The purpose of an artist is to inject sensitivity, inject awareness, trigger art in people. For artists who create, as I do, and who care so much about introducing something truly original, the idea of narcissism is a misfit. Being on the defensive for wanting to really stand out is somewhat disturbing. I push myself and my creative possibilities as far as is humanly possible. If this makes me a narcissist, well, so be it. I take great pride and great time, painstaking time, to make sure that I'm giving a thousand percent of myself. There's no compromise and I have no fear. That foundation is something that will never go away. Without that edge, without that common thread for attaching myself to something that never before in the history of the world has been accomplished. That means a lot. I have made it my purpose to create art that's going to move you. You're going to see it and if I've done my work correctly, you're going to change. You're going to see something that's going to evolve you. I believe so strongly that my work needs to have its own voice, period. Cubist illusionism is about layering the image and marrying it to a variety of compositional dimensionality. It's something that really creates an illusion, much in the same manner that a magician on stage performs. The art of the illusion, or photography in general, is really a distortion of reality. And to use the Cubist sensibility allows me to really have the viewer engage themselves, basically breaking down the puzzle or the image that they're looking at. What I have here today is a departure from this, but it's a still life because I consider you fine art. And in the still life, we're gonna see, you know, your, your portrait. All of these images are about pure new photography and art. It happens many different ways. With you, for instance, today, I'm gonna to click the camera two or three times. One piece of art is this still life bottle where I'm going to incorporate your portrait inside here. So this one, I have the art on the film. The other two, there's no art. And I'm going to allow my feelings of today to kind of make me go in a direction. I'm signing off on the final focus right now. Let me just be sure I like this. That's perfect. Super sharp. Okay, I'm just about ready. I'm gonna say two, one. Try not to blink. And we click the shot. Here we go. Two, one.
Thank you so much. Just a couple more of those and we're done. Okay, I'm ready to click it. Here we go. Two, one. Don't move, stay exactly where you are. Last shot of the day. Okay, two, one. Thank you so much, Mr. Bogdanovich. Okay, good. A true composition that has many elements is not great because we put many elements together. We can do this in Adobe, a lot of people can do that. What are we putting together? What are we combining? I recently did a, a photograph, an image, where I created a tic-tac-toe. I used a guitar neck to actually make the tic-tac-toe composition. This was in my mind, I knew I wanted to do this. I love music. Somehow it hit me one day out of the blue. Well, I'm gonna use that guitar neck. I used the guitar neck. That wasn't enough. So I decided, okay, well at the end of a tic-tac-toe game, if you win, you draw a straight line through the O's or the X's. So I used the violin bow for that. Okay, still wasn't done. I needed the X's and the O's. Another part of the composition where with light painting in the dark, camera lens opens, watches what I'm doing. I put this in place, composition was a winner. Years later, I had a vision of turning a bridge into a tic-tac-toe game. And the art was about the vision. The art and science that I apply becomes extremely difficult because while I'm doing my art, I can't see any of these parts. I don't see anything I do until the film is processed. And at that point it is yes or no. So there has to be a vision. There has to be something that you care about inside. I have very definite rules that I abide by. For instance, I'll never use a color filter or never use a color backdrop. If you see a blue backdrop behind a subject, it was a part of the photographic process where through light painting with a light wand, I am actually panning blue. I'll never project an image on a body and take the picture. I will never paint on the human body. You'll see many subjects of mine, models in the nude and otherwise, where you see my painting in their body. How do I do that? It's about a science and a magic. Everything we're doing today is about recording an image on a piece of film. Nothing more, nothing less. This entire tutorial, mind you, isn't really a photographic session taking place. It's me explaining how this image was this saxophone and this exact technique many years ago. I wanted to create a rainbow painterly scheme because the red light that's gonna come out of this saxophone as though it's playing notes really kind of worked color-wise. We took a picture of it with an 8x10 view camera, same as we have here. We're gonna go through these motions in the tutorial. If at that point we process the film, we would just have a saxophone against a black backdrop. So it's a pretty simple technique to understand because it's only a two-part exposure. I'm using two-part loosely because all of this painting with light took several hours. I had to do one note at a time. We're gonna go through that motion in a moment. But essentially it was about the exposure on the saxophone and then all of the painting with light for however long it took to again build this image. This type of science that I bring, the magic that I do, is truly as advanced, brace yourself when I say, as quantum physics. It's a pure science. It's something very involved and very deep. What's awesome about this set right now is that it's pretty tight compositionally, meaning that behind my saxophone is pure black. I'm gonna paint all the notes up here. That's against the black backdrop. So now I'm gonna go about it pretty fast. And I'm only explaining that because it would by no means be this quick in terms of time. So right now I'm composing the image on the ground glass. When I work in 8x10, everything's upside down and inverted. So it's a little more difficult, it's a little trickier. So the image here is pretty much in place. When I took that picture many years ago, I drew on the ground glass exactly where the saxophone was. Many times when I'm shooting people, I need to know exactly where they are. If they move from, to a different position than what I record, I'm in trouble later because I can't register everything properly. 
Okay, so we put the film in the camera. Now, as soon as I open this lens, it's gonna see the saxophone. So I have to have a correct exposure. I have to know what I'm doing to be sure that this part of the composition is perfect. Here we go, five second exposure coming up. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Okay, now for safety, make sure this sleeve is back in. Okay, we now have that saxophone on this piece of film. Unprocessed, of course, we have to drop it off at the film lab. We're not gonna do that. Our purpose is to give the tutorial to show you how we got all those beautiful painted notes on the film. I'm gonna put the holder back in the camera. We're ready for part two. Once I get a focus that I like, and I like what I'm seeing in here, I need you to be really still, because I'm gonna sketch your outline on my ground glass. Okay. Oh yeah, this is, this is really great. Hold on. All right, so I'm gonna say two, one, flash. Try not to blink on that flash. Okay, two, one, yes. When you create an illusion, you see things in different capacities. So when you look at a color veto human form, cubist image that's successful, at first you may see a mixture of different components in an image because your eye addresses each of them individually. When the back and forth interplay occurs, you can then, for a moment, see the entire face looking back at you from a different dimension. If you don't know the science, you don't know what the illusionist is doing, but you see it as an actual end result where he did something and he blew you out of the water. With my film, I can do that. When I create this magic, if you will, this illusion, there's a tangible connection to life, to people, to everything I believe in, to everything I live for. As an artist, I love people. In this one, you could actually maybe look a little off the camera, like look right down here. That's cool, okay, two, one, awesome. It's so funny, I do all this stuff, I take like two or three shots, and then it takes a few days or even times, sometimes longer to decide on what art I'm gonna kind of marry to the composition. So right now, I have an acetate with your body in position. So when I go to add art, this is science to this, this isn't a guessing game. I can dial in exactly the art I wanna place, you know, wherever I do it on your body. So let me mark this so I don't make a mistake later. Purity means something. Purity means hope. Without those two terms, purity, hope, truth, we have nothing. So if the symbol for anyone's art or any true original can catapult that somehow, can take that somewhere that hasn't previously been visited or understood, I feel as an artist, this is really my calling. The art of life is exactly that, an art unto itself. Light sculpts, molds, shapes every object that we photograph. Masking off light, adding light, fill light, backlight to have resolution apparent in an image. We're gonna need some kind of a soft light to really bring out that detail. Whereas a hard light is gonna wash away and create a different effect. Everything that goes in to this lighting conceptuality is gonna determine the outcome of the image. I have often up to 50 exposures dialed into one composition. Painting with light, multiple exposing, it's the cheesiest thing you could possibly do if it's not done correctly. Light is very much a part of everything. The universe is loaded with suns and pulsars and quasars and all kinds of light sources. Without light, we don't see, we don't have the world that we know. It's as important as air to breathe. It interacts and interplays with everything that's ever been created in the history of the art that we know. 
I've chosen to be a color photographer over black and white. For me, color is more lifelike and beyond lifelike. It's more true to the magnificence of life. A lot of my illuminating pieces are about color. And when I paint with light, I love deep, rich reds. I love sunset orange. Vibrancy is so important. It's so much a part of the magic that I create. I'm out there to change reality. I'm not a documentarian, a photojournalist, where I want to, for history's sake, replicate what is here and now. We could change the style and the look of virtually any scene. Evolution is the primary reason that I do art. When I speak about the universe and I think in grand terms regarding purpose for art, people evolving, and finding meaning and truth, they're all so interconnected. Being an artist, what do I do? I document time. Every photograph ever taken is a historical documenting of time itself. NASA released a photograph, and they called it the oldest and the youngest photograph ever taken. It takes 14 billion years for the light to reach us. So therefore, it's the oldest photograph ever taken. It's the youngest photograph ever taken, because when we're looking at this actual image, what are we seeing? We're seeing clusters of light. We're seeing matter that hasn't even formed itself into planets or stars yet. So what's happening? We are looking at existing life, a snapshot, a photograph of a time before our Earth ever existed. So we can actually say for fact that we live in a multidimensional universe. How does all this relate to me? I took a major step back. Now, I see everything very differently. When we think of life and time and space, it is a multi-dimensional time set and time frame. When I took a picture 20 years ago of anything, my son being born, that was documenting time 20 years ago. Well, guess what? If we look in a telescope right now, we can theoretically look back into the light, and while I'm observing a distant planet, I can say to myself, through science, while I'm looking at that planet X amount of years ago, my son was X amount of years old. These things are really what inspire me as a human being and have influenced me to create something that's gonna really stir you up in a positive way. That's gonna really make you look to yourself in whatever capacity you live and exist because we all have art in us. Real art stands the test of time. You ready for one? Yeah. Okay. Where do you want me to look? Eyes are going to be right into the lens on this first okay. one. Okay. Okay, here we go. Getting you in place on film, so do not move. Or later when I register the R. Okay, here we go. First shot's about ready. Two, one. Awesome, yes. I gave you a little bit of an idea before when I showed you the registration process I use where I layer my art on the same piece of film without any kind of computer. So it's purely natural photography. It's really a tribute to filmmaking without computers, you know, going back to old school foundations. Traditional photography took about a hundred years, if not longer, to really establish itself where at the museum people can see an oil painting from a master like Leonardo da Vinci and look at a great work of modern photography and see them in the same capacity. That took a very, very long time. The term photography is about film and light, not image capture on a chip in some form of memory in a computer. 
actual film, the tangible scientific emulsion that needs to work with chemistry. This new era of digital photography needs to be broken down. I don't even like the word photography attached personally, because for me digital really means image capture and typically some kind of graphic illustration following. The millions of images that are being taken every minute has to muddy the water somehow. I mean, there are museum shows now that are about iPhone photographs. I've had people say to me, why does it matter if it's digital or not? I'm kind of horrified at that question because the way we create anything has a lot to do with the outcome, with the end result. So when we talk about photography versus digital, it's easy for me to point out the difference in the sciences between the two. Photographic resolution, color control, contrast, all of these things that have definite characteristics and nuances that allow someone to see distinctly what those differences are. That is part of my body of work and my traditional art style. That can never be part of the digital domain. Okay, now I'm gonna really draw you and make this happen. Here we go. That's super sure. I care about the art form of photography in the purest sense imaginable. It's sexy, but it's art sexy. Not cheap sexy, not soft porn sexy, no way. This is beautiful. All right, let me get the shot and stop talking about it. Okay, here we go. Okay, why don't I see anything? Because I'm too busy talking. All right, no mistakes, Michael, let's do this. Michael, keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Come on, I said 11 and a half. Michael, make the decision, come on, make the decision. Hurry, Michael, hurry, C1 it was, C1. Remember, C1, no mistakes, C1. I have a lot of heart. I take great pride to make sure that I'm giving a thousand percent of myself. Yes, thank you so much, you're awesome. Thank you. Wow, yes. Yes, I have art. Film does not lie. Film sees what the lens allows it to see. You open up a lens, light is thrown on a film emulsion, there's no compromise. That's a science, that's an art. When I do cinema photography, it's the same exact thing as when I do a still life. I did a piece recently with Robert De Niro. When I want to create the portrait of any subject that the still image required, say, 20 exposures. If I want that to come to life in cinema, I have to go to frame one and do 20 exposures. I've got to do that 24 times if I want real-time playback because 24 frames a second constitute a real sense of timing. I have to repeat that process, and I have to do it again and again. I cinematically captured a model dancing, and I placed artwork through multiple exposure, as we're describing, in her body. The way I did it was I shot the camera real time. The model was dancing. The film camera's rolling at 24 frames a second. We have the girl captured on my film. I now take that original film. I go back to the very beginning. I have everything understood and registered. I know where the girl was and where she was moving to at every exact point that she's doing her movement. I go to frame one, I do my 20 exposures. I go to frame two, I do my 20 exposures. I create that still life 24 times to have one second of playback. I accomplished a film called Chasing Originality, 15 minutes and 35 seconds, 22,000 440 frames, individual frames, where I did this layering, if you will, went into that piece. It was five hours a day for almost a year and two months. It is so time consuming, so painstaking. The idea of purity is by no means attached to simplicity. It's quite the opposite. About three decades ago, I wanted a shot, a time-lapse exposure or sequence of the Williamsburg Bridge and of the traffic on the FDR Drive to bring this motion alive. I arrived here at this very vantage point. I was disappointed. I looked out, my vantage point was obscured. 
I couldn't take the shot. I hit a moment of absolute craziness. I actually lifted myself up, climbed up on this thing here. I'm not gonna actually do it now. And on this exact beam, this thin eye beam, I had a tripod in one hand, I had my camera in the other hand, and a knapsack on my back with camera gear. I took one step at a time, made sure that my footing was in place. I did not want to fall into the traffic. It was mind determination and the need to get this shot that had me out there. It was also, incidentally, the middle of winter. It was freezing. 10 minutes go by, I'm still shaking like a leaf, like a cat caught up in a tree. And I decided, I'm here, I may as well do it. I had my priorities in order. It was to make the shot happen. Three hours later, my body was shaking so violently, not from fear, but from the cold. The moral of the story is obviously that passion stands ahead of most everything. And insanity is overcome, or in this case, it was serendipitously fortuitous because the outcome was wonderful. It's something that lives on in my arenas of art. It was a moment of craziness. I believe we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. For me as an artist, the very first thing that really matters is getting someone to react, getting someone to have a mindfulness or an explosion of passion. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, or you move. Everyone has art in them. I try to tap on the part of people that's not desensitized. It's imperative that the person I'm trying to reach is someone who is willing to expand themselves. We're here to share an art, to give something. And I know that my art will make people evolve themselves and look into themselves for who they are and what they're accomplishing. Being a true original, creating art, is a matter of life and death to me.